Okay, here I am. I'm ready to sew this last row onto the onto my quilt. And Cynthia mentioned in the in the comment section that she would like to see how I attach a row using quilt as you go method. So here we go. So this is not a, a huge quilt to manipulate under the sewing machine and on top of the tabletop, but it is something um, when it's all quilted. So the, the top three rows here are quilted now. They are all joined together using a quilt as you go method. I used a dark sashing and with a dark sashing, you really have to be careful that they match up on the seams where the two sections join together because it's really obvious when they zigzag and it doesn't look very nice then. So here's my bottom row. It's ready to sew onto the three that are already joined together. So the first thing I need to do is to sew my two strips, the top strip and the bottom strip, to the um, piece that is already sewn together and joined. That's important because you want to have the majority of the quilt away from the presser foot and not in the space between the presser foot and the machine. It's too hard to roll that much up and get it in the place. So the first thing I need to do is to take that piece that's all uh, has the nine blocks in it and set it up on my sewing table and get ready to sew that together. Here we are. So on the underside, I have my piece of back backing strip, which is one and one half inches. And because I have a seam in it, I have the good side of it toward the good side of the backing. I don't want to go over the seam and have, have to take that part out. And the piece at the top, just a reminder, I cut those two inches and I folded them in half. And for this long seam, I did press it to make sure that I could show you accurately where it's going to go. So normally what I do is I put all of those layers together and I use the presser foot and the needle to hold it in place. Then with my left hand, I go underneath the quilt and hold it from the underside, about um, eight to 10 inches away from where I'm going to be sewing. I find that if I can guide it and sort of lift it with my arm, it doesn't drag and pull everything to the side. It keeps things nicely situated so that they're, they sew in a straight line. And that's always good to have it sewing in a straight line. So really, I don't even touch anything where close to where it's being sewn, where the needle is going up and down. I'm holding it about 10 inches away from the needle and about 10 inches away from the, the direction I'm uh, sewing. It just makes it easier for me and I can see more clearly. So with something like this, I just take my time and if I find that the quilt is dragging down here on, on my front, in front of the sewing machine, I will just lift it up and put it on my lap and try not to have it sort of drag away from me. Really, I'm not holding the spot right where I'm sewing. I'm holding it farther away. When I first started doing this quilt as you go, I used to pin everything. I pinned it every couple of inches. And then I found that my seams were all zigzag. 
and nothing was a straight line because the pins held things very securely. But fabric wants to be what fabric wants to be and it's a kind of flexible thing. So it's nice to be able to just take your time, stitch, I don't know how long that is, reevaluate, shift it around a bit, make sure you've got what you want where you want it. For the short seams, they're easy. The longer ones, I, I agree, they're a bit more uh, fussy, so you have to think about what you're doing. And when I'm doing a quilt like this, I make a, a whole strip of sashing, and there's pieces there. Um, just keep sewing, it'll work. So here I've come to a seam in the underside. I've got it pressed open. That helps to make things a little uh, smoother. And here I am coming close to the end of the row. going to trim this off and put these away for another day. Now, if I just set this over here on the side of the table, so I just check, I just check with my hand to make sure that everything here is caught in and there's no bits of uh, seam, seam allowance that should be caught into the seat stitching. And I also fold it over and likewise on the back side, likewise on the back side, I just make sure that everything back here has been caught into the seam. And there isn't any funny business back here that I need to look at and check. But everything's fine. So now the last part, I usually take this part here and just put it up on the table so it doesn't slide away. And I'm just going to move. So now this part is going to get sewn on to the bottom of that part. And this part from the back has to get sewn onto the back of this one. So all I do is join the, the back of that to the back of that, back of this to the back of that, and I flip that one underneath. This one back up here so it doesn't fall off the table. And this is one place that I definitely pin because I like to see this line continue with this line in a straight row and not come down and zig it over like that. 
So the best way of doing that is just keeping it secure with a pin. So I fold this part up underneath to check where it is. Check where it is underneath, and when that is lined up with the one that it's going to join up to, I take a pin and I put it in the seam line to hold it in place because I'm going to start here sewing and come along here, and when I get to this part, I can take the pin out. And I know that that's going to hold it in the seam so it's going to stay where I want it. And likewise, with this one, I will do the same thing. Now I've got a little bit of white batting showing there, but my seam allowance will cover that over. That's one place I will have to check when I finish sewing this to make sure that it did actually catch. Again, one pin on the seam allowance to hold it in place. Now I can sew this. I only need two pins. I'm ready to sew and I just make sure even though my pieces are sticking out over the head, that's fine. I need something to hang on to when I start to sew. But when I want to start to sew, I make sure that the tops are uniformly lying next to each other. And one isn't like way over here and what, or over here because that pulls on the seam up here that I want to sew. So as long as I keep this back piece quite parallel along the top, you good? quite parallel along the top, it seems to work out a lot better for me. So, here I go. The top is aligned, and I start to hold it in place, and then the needle does its trick. It is a good clamp. It holds it. <clears throat> now, where I placed the first pin on the seam line over here, that's what I hold with my right hand. I hold the pin and the seam line. And my other hand is underneath this massive piece of quilting and I'm holding the underside piece. I don't hold the top one at all. So if I hold the underside one, it tends to keep the tension uniform underneath and all I do is let the machine feed dog do the work. Okay. And because this is the last part to sew on, the quilt is the heaviest now it's going to be. But I've done uh, quilt as you go methods with queen size quilts, uh, lots of, whoops, I, uh, see I wasn't paying attention and I went crooked, but I can fix that. I just stop. Lift up the presser foot and I don't know, I went crooked. I I can just go back, start again here, and just pay attention to what I'm doing <laughs> instead of trying to do all this. All right, so I'm holding underneath once again. So here I am at my pin, the pin marker, which is uh, keeping the seams uniform. I pull the pin out now, 
I sew over the seam, stop. Now I readjust this quilt because now it's getting lighter for me because one third of the quilt is already on the tabletop. It's not hanging on me anymore. All right. So here we go. Next, next step. Here I am at the next pin. I can stop here, readjust once again, and now I can just make sure that the two ends that, that I have left in my hand here are just right together over here. And again, I put my hand underneath the quilt to hold the underside piece. The top piece is fine. Pull out this pin. Now I see my seam allowance folded over, but that's all right. It'll be fine. bottom of that seam. Now I'll just flip this open and check it on both sides because that is easier to check it now than when it's finished and you have to go back and take things out. Okay, so there is the almost finished piece and I'm quite happy with the way that the lines match up here and here. So now the last part. The last part is really fun. I'll show you close up here what I do. If you pull these apart you see there's going to be a gap in between here and here and you don't want to pull these as you're sewing. I always lift this one up slightly and with my pointing finger here, I take this and I put it underneath the seam allowances from this side. And I just make sure that's what I'm doing. Then this top part, the black one in my case, all I do is fold it over and I sew close to this edge here with the sewing machine and that stitches it down. Now, I know lots of people who want to sew that last part by hand. They make a better job of it. They're happier with sewing it by hand. I like to sew mine by machine. And I'm happy with my results. When I started, I wasn't quite so happy, but I think it's like everything else. You have to practice and make sure that you know what you're doing and you're, you're good with it. So just now I'm gonna take a pin here and I'm just gonna put a pin at the top until I get sitting back down at the sewing machine. Now, like all of these rows, the only part you have in the machine itself is one square. And for each of the rows, when I've joined it up to the one previously, I just fold this one up under here. I bring this one up on the desk and have it folded up under here. And then all I have to deal with is what's right on top of my tray table here. And I can manage that. So with this one, again, 
There, I started. I don't need the pin anymore. I'll put the pin over here so it doesn't fall on the floor. I lose pins. All right. So this one is folded over here. I take my finger. I just press this down, finger press it down. And then with my other hand, I get it started and just go like that. This one I turn under. This one goes on top. I hope that's all right. Roll this one up there, that'll work better. You can also come and press these over with your finger like I'm doing, or you can press them with an iron and then pin them. Whatever works for you. Now you notice here, I was giving this one here a little tug downwards so I can sort of jury rig this seam a little better. All of that nastiness gets caught up inside. There's a nice, clean, folded edge here. So on the back side, that row of stitching is very close to the folded edge of that seam and it keeps it very secure. I've been doing this for, for a number of years, so I've pretty much got my uh, sizes and my stitching foot and everything in the order that I like it. And some people like to make their bindings or their sashings here smaller. I like the size that I make and I accommodate the fact that I'm using a bit wider than, than the other people. And it, it makes my life easier. And if I'm happy when I'm quilting, it's a, it's a better quilt result for me. So I hope that answers your question. Now all I have to do is put my binding around the edge and this quilt is done. Okay, so I've got my binding ready. 
and I cut my binding two and one half inches wide. I use straight of grain and when I join them I always press the seams open and then I fold the binding in half lengthwise and press it with an iron. I find I get a much better um, binding on my quilt if I have this pressed before I sew it. I know a lot of people like to use um, binding that is made on a bias. But every time I have made binding that is bias tape, my, my edges all go wavy and they won't lie flat. I don't think I stretch as I'm going around the quilt, but something is not happy with my tension or something that allows it to make um, a wavy edge. So I just use straight of grain. I'm happy with the results and my quilts lie flat. So here I am. Coming to the corner, I sew almost to the corner. I need to have a quarter of an inch from the corner. And I push the reverse button. Then I take, and this is going to be awfully hard to see because it's black. Then I take this piece of binding and I fold it, give a little crease there, and I fold it up and I fold, this, fold that up on a 45 underneath and I turn this down and fold it down so that this edge then continues down this side of the quilt. And inside this little fold is that little uh, miter corner like that. So then I just put this back under the presser foot and start at the corner again and sew until I get to the next corner. I keep the edge of my presser foot at the edge of the fabric and I just keep the quilt. Oh, I always have to cut these little things off. another corner. Now the really nice thing about quilt as you go is 
I didn't have to trim anything on this quilt except those little sashings that I put in. The quilt square is already squared up before you come and sew those sashings on and put the quilt pieces together. When you are sewing a quilt and quilting it with a backing and a batting and a, all the pieces, you, then you have to go find a big table then and, and then trim it all the way around to make it square. This usually always comes out square every time because you do a small section at a time. Uh, it's just so easy once you get practiced a little bit, once you get some practice and find that it, that it really works well. Now sometimes because I use binding that has seams in it, I might get close to a corner and find that the seam is right at the corner. In which case I would stop back from the corner. I would cut that piece off and reattach it somewhere up here so that the seam is not at the corner. There's nothing worse than trying to make a miter corner with a seam on it. Ugh. Tried it once, learned my lesson. Okay, here's the, another corner. Almost to the corner. Do a couple of reverse stitches to secure it. Lift it out from the presser foot. Mark the corner. Make your miter. It's just folded underneath so you can test it by looking at it this direction and press it back in that into that position. And start again. Come down the next row. again, make my miter, fold it over, check it, oh, that's a little lopsided, there, check it, fold it back the way it goes. And sew down the side. Is exciting putting binding on because the quilt is almost done. And when I finish a quilt, I can start another one. Got my eye on some polka dot fabric downstairs. it's really fun to use patterns on the back of quilt as you go. You get two quilts for the price of one. And in my case, it's using orphan blocks that people gave me on the back. I made the blocks that are on the front and somebody else made these blocks on the back.
last corner. Now when I get close to the end where I started, I have to join the two pieces together. So I need to leave myself some space to do that. So here's one end, here's the other end. So I have to join those two together and I've got enough room here to do that. So I'm just going to reverse and backstitch this over here. I stopped sewing here. So I've got lots of room to fold that back. And I stopped sewing here, so I need some room here. So if I did that over here, and I did that up here. I can see that if I sewed that together right there and there, that's going to make a nice smooth transition. So what I do is I cut this one straight across. Make sure that one's going to be like that. And I take my scissors and cut that one. So that they meet right there, right there. And then I make one final cut down farther so that I can now join those two together. But that cut was done on a quite an angle so I have to check that out yep <laughs> make it straight nothing worse than crooked seams all right so then all I have to do whoops all I have to do is join those two together but to make it a smooth transition like the rest of the quilt, I first of all open out the seam allowance here. And I open out the seam allowance here. And because I left myself some room, I have enough room to take this, put it under the presser foot. And so across this seam. When I open that back out, I'll check it if I erred on the side of too big. I can always make another seam. If I erred on the side of cutting too much off, then I'm in trouble. I have to add something. But to me, look at that. So I go back where I stopped. Do a little back stitch, come across, and here's where I need to go to. That's a little bumpy because I didn't press it. 
but it'll work. Joined up. Back stitch. Do two. Clip it. And now I have one more step to go. So I take this whole quilt, flip it upside down, and now I can fold the binding out from underneath, bring it around to the top side, and again, I know most of my friends are going to want to do this last part, hand sewing. I machine sew it. I just do. It's your option if you like to hand sew. It makes a lovely edge. I like to machine sew because my hands don't like to hand sew. So don't start on the seam. It's harder to start on a bump. And it's all downhill from there. Okay, I'll show you to the corner and over, but you don't have to see the whole thing because it's just repetitive. So I just hold that out, fold it over, roll my finger inside the fold to make sure that the fabric is inside the fold. comes to the corner. I trim a little bit of this corner off to make it easier and less bulky to fold. That I don't take very much off. I don't need to, but just a little bit. So the little threads that are from stopping and starting, they always stick out. So when I get close to the corner like that, I have to make a turn and that's where that mitered edge is. So I come to the bottom, the side where I'm turning, and I fold that up. And I kind of hold it there with my finger. And I hold with my finger the point where the seam comes. Then this little point on this side, I hold with my thumb and fold it over. When I get to the corner, I put a stitch right there at that little fold. Lift the presser foot, turn this around. Put the presser foot down. Slowly come down off that hill. And just keep going the whole side. So I come to the next corner. Makes a nice mitered corner. Well, I think I'm going to leave you at this point. I'll finish my quilt and just do a picture at the end. But watching me sew binding on has got to be like watching paint dry. Just waiting for the end to come. 
So here is the completed back, all finished and bound. And here is the front, all finished and bound. Well, it's one quilt, front and back. Love the quilt as you go.